One of the most interesting things about Philadelphia, you have these close connections between the enslaved populations and the free black populations. They were living right beside each other. So you can be a free person walking along the street, shopping, and you can run into an enslaved person. And most of the time they did not speak because there was a very sharply divided community between those who had and those who did not. I think Philadelphia, even more so than Baltimore, you saw that the communities, as they were growing alongside each other, were growing in very different directions. Families like James Fortin did not interact with the enslaved populations. They were educating their children. Uh, they were planning to have them be a part of the future. They were building their economies. So what would they have been doing with people who could not read or write? They were not helping them in a lot of ways to, to gain freedom. You did have those small communities, the abolitionists, who were beginning to grow at that time, because that was really the beginnings of the abolitionist movement. But at the same time, the free black population in the mid-18th century was about building their family, about building their economy, about finding ways to kind of deal with the aftermath of the war, thinking about what their legacies were going to be, and how they were going to make sure their children were educated and kept free, because there was always that, that danger that your child could end up on the wrong street and be shipped somewhere where you can never find them again. So I, I think that's interesting. I think that set the stage for Philadelphia by the 19th century becoming the place that it was.